Besides IAQ, comfort, and system sizing, there's one more important reason to use the correct indoor design temperatures for your HVAC system. Residential code. Let me give you some details. Welcome back, I'm Chris Morin with HVAC Pro Blog, and I have to tell you, this is probably one of the toughest conversations you have with a homeowner, right? Interior design conditions, because let's be honest, the customer is always right, right? When I start to talk about state codes, particularly with those less concerned with the code, I like to talk about what's required as the minimum by law. That's right, this is your license. Luckily for homeowners and for quality contractors, that minimum is starting to be enforced and it's getting better. The 2006, 09, 12, 15, even 2018, International Energy Conservation Code, the IECC, sets the minimum design temperatures required by law. Notice the years, this is not new information. It's just starting to be enforced. And let's be honest, as soon as something is enforced, that's when our contractors start to embrace. So, in section 302.1 of the IECC, International Energy Conservation Code, they define the interior design conditions. In there, it states, if you're doing a load calculation, the maximum design temperature and heating is 72. It should be 70 plus or minus two. Why these temperatures, you might ask? Let's refer to the ASHRAE psychrometric comfort zone. Right off the bat, I'm gonna point out that in the summertime, there is no point that feels comfortable when you set the temperature for 70 degrees. I know everybody that has window air conditioners thinks that's what's gonna feel comfortable because that's what the setting is on the dial or even the thermostat on an oversized air conditioner. If your thermostat or the space actually reached 70 degrees with central air conditioning, it's gonna feel cold and clammy. That's because it's gonna be well higher than 50% relative humidity. If you actually had 75 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb and 50% relative humidity, that would put you in the middle of the psychrometric comfort zone, where the majority of the United States and the world feel comfortable. What I like to point out here is it'll allow for room for drift as well. Let's say it's mild, like 78, but really high humidity, and you wanna turn your air conditioner on. If you're sized correctly, the system will still short cycle because we're below the design temperature outside. And when you do this, it's gonna have a tough time removing humidity. So most homeowners will actually turn the temperature down on their thermostat and they start to associate comfort with the number that's on there, which isn't necessarily true. Comfort is based on relative humidity. We're trying to get to 50% relative humidity here. And in order to do that, the system's gotta run longer in order to remove the moisture. Now, a lot of studies went into this by ASHRAE. They just didn't pull these numbers out from thin air. The majority of people are comfortable at 75 degrees and 50% relative humidity, but there's also some other charts as to why. If you didn't know, the least amount of bacteria, fungus, and mold grow between the percentages of 30 to 50% relative humidity. So it's not just about human comfort, it's also about indoor air quality. And of course, in the winter time, this is why the cold climates actually add humidity with a whole house humidifier in order to feel more comfortable in order to reduce all of that fungus mold and bacteria growth so how do we get this to work with the homeowner that wants 70 degrees in cooling and like 76 in heating we know it's not going to work but we have to educate the homeowner all right has to be done on the front end during the sales process you have to set expectations you can't do this as a technician after the system's already installed and tell them, no, no, the system won't get down to 70 degrees in cooling. We sized it for 75. I'm sure every one of you have had this conversation in the past. If you set the expectation on the front end, it would have been less likely to happen and it would associate comfort with how they feel, not the number on the thermostat. Of course, over the years, people thought they were sizing systems for the homeowner, not the home. Remember, we're not going based on lifestyle, we're going based on what's actually at the house and the limitations required by law. Sure, you could always give a homeowner what they want, but I have a feeling they'd rather be comfortable and have a system that's installed to code. 
Thanks again for joining me this week. I'm Chris with HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. See you next week.